amazing game that they can play on a variety of different tablets. They can play it on their Chromebooks. They can play it on their phone. There's even a Farmers 2050 that they can take it farther with. It's a little different, but it's the same company and they take that home and share it. And that's one of the things that I consider success when one of my kids takes it away and they share it with their mom or they share it with their dad or their little brother. And I have kids that are, they, they can't wait. They want this game to go farther. They need more. And they learn so much. It talks, it's how to be a good steward and how to take care of the land and not only the land, but the people. And they, they just adore this game and they will beg to play it. So anytime they're wanting to play something agriculture with the technology they have, I'm all in. Another thing we use, we use Purple Plow. This is definitely a later in the year thing for us since agriculture is new. Um, but it has these challenges that they put up and there's a new one for the fall. So this would be what you would work on in the fall. But it's a challenge for the kids and they have a, it has a book that goes with it that you can download. It walks them through how to, this one's dealing with waste products and finding a solution. Last fall, it was creating a sustainable farm. And I had one of my students that had, she has an agriculture background. She created the most amazing farm, a full, a full out design of how to make her sustainable without ever leaving the farm. But they also have these small puzzlers. And throughout the summer on their Facebook page, they've had small little activities they could do pretty quickly. And this, picture here in the lower left-hand corner is one of my boys what am I doing? is one of my boys that is was pretty laid back didn't get too involved but it had them build, building their own pollinator type nest with the different designs and he built this from home and his mother sent me the picture and I was so impressed because he took time out of his free time because our STEM ag class is not a required class, so he didn't have to do it, and he did. He thought this was the most fun because his dad helped him. So these little activities from Purple Plow are great introductions to just STEM. Discovered Dairy is something I found last year, and it opens, this is one of my new favorites. Um, this is, we go here and we adopt a cow, or I do, adopt a cow for the class, and then as the year goes, we get different things from them. So the first thing that happens is they send us a package. And in that package, it was a tub, a fairly large tub. It had, first it had a, a stuffed cow. So we knew we had a cow coming. And then it had a bunch of different lessons based on grade levels. It had some coloring books that my kids set, chose to share with lower levels but it had some coloring books with some cool information. And then what's great for middle school, it had some on-level accurate ag books. So they were super excited to have books and they, this cow became a huge fighting thing, but um, they all wanted to hold it. But what happened, they, after a few weeks, we got our adoption certificate and a picture of our calf from the dairy barn and its name was apple bar and as the year went we could go on virtual visits to the farm with apple bar so this was for us to be able to see and go to a farm was an amazing experience because it's not something we can just do so this program it opens august 1st they have middle school elementary whatever you're looking for and it all comes in the box so if you're whatever lesson you're looking for it's there and um, it's free they at the end of the thing there are they offer a chat so you can do like a video chat with one of their farmers we didn't get to do that because COVID hit and we missed that end part but i'm looking forward to it this year and this is something i fully recommend just go to dairy.com and register now write it on your calendar so you won't forget great program for those to just find some connection. This link just takes us to National Ag in the Classroom Gaming Center. Um, 
I, before I let my kids play the games, I make them do game reviews. So they'll go through and while they're playing it, they're reviewing it. They're talking about the graphics. They're talking about, can you play it again? Is it a one-time play? Is it too hard? Is it too easy? What grade level do they think it's for? And they will be brutally honest about every bit of this. They like a lot of these games. Notice Journey 2050 is on here. And there's the Farmers 2050 app. This Nutrients for Life is hard, but they love it because it's difficult and they have to really think. So this is a good site for those that are the, your early finishers. It's a little tech in there for them. Let's see, this, this picture, let's see. This is our superintendent. He's reading an accurate ag book. So some STEM lessons that I use every year and I'm going to continue using every year because it seems important for our class. The pumpkin catapult we use in October. We talk about pumpkins. We talk about where they grow. The kids here, we have the little pumpkin patches that they go and the pumpkins are already picked and they get to grab one. So we look at real pumpkin patches. We talk about real pumpkins. I pick the ugliest pumpkins I can find to bring into my classroom for them to look at. There's a full lesson on the Ag in the Classroom website dealing with lots and lots of stuff about pumpkins. We build pumpkin putty. We, then we take, we take our pumpkins, we set them up for the case of the missing pumpkin. We put one in an aquarium inside the classroom and cover it. We don't cut it, we don't do anything else with it. We just let it sit there. We put one outside the same way and we watch, we watch it decompose. The one in the classroom becomes covered many more times as it starts decomposing, but it is one of the most interesting things to watch the kids come in every day to see what's happening with the pumpkin. And for a month or so, a lot of it's, there's nothing happening. This pumpkin's gonna be here all year. And then as it, summer and or as spring starts happening, you start to watch that pumpkin decompose and the observations become very interesting and you hear them, they're very serious about nobody touching it because they don't wanna open it and let the smell out but the one outside goes missing quickly. So that's a really cool lesson. Temple Grandin has this lesson is one that was new last year. Um, there is the girl who thought in pictures. This is a great start book. Um, it walks you through all kinds of information about Temple. This is the book I had our superintendent read and the kids were enthralled. I had a class of 25 sixth graders just in awe over a book with very juvenile type pictures. Even the superintendent when he left was going to find more about Temple Grandin. Then we read another book, Temple Grandin, How the Girl Who Loved Cows Embraced Autism and Changed the World. This is the book when I was lucky enough to meet her at the National Ag Conference. She told me this is the book I had to read to my sixth graders. And she's absolutely right, because this was the most, it went more in depth and gave them more information. And it has a lot of her drawings. So you can see exactly how she designed things, actual photos, which are amazing. So this was, this moves on with that lesson. And there's the others there is a lesson that goes with it you have your objectives your vocab your background lots of great information if you haven't ever researched or know anything about temple grandin i, I would encourage you to go even if you don't want to teach necessarily with agriculture just about the autism and who she is this is an amazing lesson as you can see lots of information there and they build couches what i have my kids do for stem Grafting is another one of those projects that got cut short with our virtual learning. Um, we started and I had them graft. We actually graft a turnip and a carrot. We just took them and they practiced cutting because I didn't want them to start and tear lots of plants up. And they carried around this piece of turnip with the carrot stuck in it. It was the craziest thing. Um, but they were excited and they were telling other people what grafting would do. And they were excited for spring when we were gonna graft tomatoes we didn't get there but this is interesting and it's fun for them to learn that that can be done 
And here's one that talks about grafting the fruit trees and the pecan trees. Lots of information there to help through with that. And then pollinator habitats. This is one that's near and dear to me. I, I think this is super important. I'm all about saving the bees and the pollinators. And this is, all, this is something they can do. This lesson is things that we can do with things that we have here at school. So they read about the pollinators and it always seems to amaze them that pollinators aren't just bees and butterflies. They, they start looking at other things that even they're a pollinator. And, and they work through that. And we look at the vocab. And then this, as an ELA reading teacher, just as an aside, how reliable are your sources? This is huge. And this is a great resource for that. Looking at the website and how, how important, how reliable that is. But this bee nesting box is something that we can do with stuff we have at school. So they bring a milk carton if they have one from the cafeteria. If not, it takes us a couple of days. We can collect enough. And it's just white glue and paper drinking straws. And they cut them and put them in there. And they have these habitats they can take home. One year we did it in the fall, right, right fall, winter time. And one of my little girls was so disappointed because she couldn't get anything to live there. And then spring came and her mom called and she was very super excited that something finally moved into her pollinator habitat. So that is take home and share. These, this is the little girl that built, this is her sustainable farm she built. And this is some of my boys working with a trunk from the Noble Foundation. And this is a pumpkin catapult. This little boy, this is why I, I enjoyed STEM and ag so much. He was one that loved when we did ag lessons. Other than that, he pretty much didn't pay attention in class. It wasn't, he didn't want to do the book work. It didn't appeal to him. But when we were building something, his was always the best. He had an engineering mind and everybody would go to him to get help. And I, I love that Ag in the Classroom does this for my kids. It gives them an outlet that they wouldn't normally have that, that they can build and they can shine in a different area. So, a little bit, if all, please, please explore the Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom website. If you look depending on your lesson, sometimes I will go and if I get to the grocery store and they have apples on sale, I'll come look for an apple lesson because that's what, you know, as teachers, we have to watch our budgets. So I look for that. I always look for anything my kids can sample or taste because that's important and it's really how ag got started in my classroom because I wanted my kids to have an extra snack. Um, but you can look by the lesson title if you know what you're looking for, grade level, but I wouldn't limit myself there because just because it's lower doesn't mean you can't adjust it. There's other categories you can look at, lessons even in Spanish. So this is a great resource that you should use. And let's see. If you have any lessons, please, please share them in the chat so that we, because these are amazing and And that's kind of where I wind up. If you have any questions, always, always you can email me and I'm pretty quick to answer. And, or if you have a great idea you'd like to share and I will share anything with you. I'll make sure to put this into the, share this with Audrey so it can go into the drive. There's lots of links throughout this that will link you back to those lessons. I wanted to let you know something. I wanted to let you know <laughs> Dusty. Um, we love, love sharing so many great so ideas great and, and very and impressed very with your Zoom skills. <laughs> so just so you know, <laughs> you're doing an awesome job. <laughs> I 
until someday I'll learn to go slower, but I think it's that being in the classroom. I only have the three minutes, let's go. <laughs> Bestie, you did a great job. Does anyone have any more questions for her that you'd like to ask? Melody, I think, is going to let you know a little bit of information. She may have put it in the chat um, about the Port Council grant. That's okay. I can uh, go ahead and just okay, tell a little bit. I did put it in the chat, but sometimes people miss that. Uh, Desi said, you know, all teachers have to watch their budgets, and we do. Um, even with Ag in the Classroom, you know, our uh, budgets sometimes get cut to with state funding. So we um, completely understand that. But so one of the things that we do to help teachers is we partner with the Port Council and they provide grants two times during the year. We have a, a fall cycle and a spring cycle. Uh, during the fall, the grants are due on September 15th. So you still have plenty of time to write one uh, for that. You just have to uh, list our lessons that you're going to use and then the supplies that you uh, need uh, to, you, to uh, do those uh, lessons. Sorry, my tongue got tied a little bit. Uh, and it's a very straightforward, simple grant. We use the rubric um, to score the grants. It is competitive. We give um, six $500 grants um, in the fall and six $500 grants in the spring. The spring deadline is fe uh, February 15th. And so um, you have plenty of time to be thinking about a project that you would like to do and maybe you don't have the money or maybe it's that you have lots of lessons that you want to do throughout the year. So we don't tell you how you have to focus um, on your uh, grant. And so we have um, all sorts of things. We've had people write them for uh, gardens. We've had people write uh, to do just lots of little individual lessons throughout the year. Maybe you want to focus on taste testings, different things like that. Um, the sky's the limit. Just it's limited um, to our lessons that you want to use. And so we hope that you'll apply. Thanks, Melody. And um, Emily, do you want to let them know about last week's session that Dusty referenced? Yes, definitely. Um, so last week we had Frank Harden, who actually works for the Noble Research Institute. And the Noble Research Institute does a lot of awesome stuff for teachers. And they have several science-based trunks that you can actually check out. They have multiple that they'll actually um, send all over the state, which is really cool. Um, he actually talked about some of them had gone to other states around the nation and they're pushing for a little bit more of that. Um, but what's cool, if you did happen to miss that session, because we don't have another one this week, that session was recorded and will be available on our website um, the first week of August. So be sure and look for that if you want to know any more, more information about what trucks they do offer. But it's an awesome opportunity for you to have a lot of those supplies basically given to you to use in your classroom so you're not out a lot of money and uh, that's an awesome resource for teachers and a great learning opportunity for your students thanks dusty is there anything that you want to add about the um, port council grains or frank's um trunks grants always, always looking for grants um the trunks are amazing i fully recommend those. there's always extra even and we're school so it's been more than enough and it, it's amazing i would definitely recommend going and checking those out yes and i just saw johnny reminded us in the chat box the trunks are free and not only are they free to check out but the shipping is also free to return them so that's an excellent opportunity and dusty mentioned a lot of pumpkin activities that she does with her students and she may have forgotten this but we have a video of her classroom and what it looks like and so i'm going to share that video because I think it will let you um, see a little glimpse into her classroom and all that her students get to participate in throughout this school year. So I'm going to show you this. This is a an engaged class learning about pumpkins and I hope that you'll enjoy it. I'm Dusty McCartney and this is my eighth year teaching. It's my first year to teach science. I've been teaching reading all those other years. Um, 
I got involved in Ag in the Classroom when I was still in college. The kids are very interested in it, it's very pertinent to them. And this year with science, it's, we use it almost every day in some way. We've been dealing with pumpkins. We did the case of the missing pumpkin. Boys carved one and the girls carved one. And we have one outside and we're like seeing which one decomposes faster. This one collapsed over the over last night. Yeah, we're gonna, because it's an ag activity. Oh, like you like it? We built pumpkin putty. And the kids have had a blast with that. I try to connect my reading to the Ag in the Classroom activities because that helps the kids remember. So we built the putty and then we did a creative writing where we added in the element of the putty attacking us. It's getting bigger and bigger as we sit here. Now everyone else's is as well. It's starting to move. Your putty is trying to join up. It now has a life of its own. You include a pumpkin in your story. Somehow this pumpkin is gonna help you with our putty problem, okay? You're gonna include one pumpkin fact, like what might you include, David? You can eat the flowers. You can eat their flowers. So maybe the pumpkin flower has something to do with saving the putty. You have to include Mr. Man. He doesn't have to help you save it. Maybe the putty attacks him. It could happen. All of the putty goes to the middle of the loom. Caitlin, Angel, and Jocelyn all scream. The super pumpkin came and told the putty that pumpkins have 90% water. So the putty went into the water fountain, then got wet. Then all come together. Angel screams, it's becoming a monster. Cat screams, help me, I'm stuck. Suddenly we see her drowning in pumpkin putty. Everybody's putty joined together. Me, Carter, Bruce, Gavin freaked out. Then Mr. Man walked in, saw it, and yelled, noon detention. He knew it was made 90% water. He was going to make that cucurbit pay to be continued. <laughs> Which makes them a little more involved and they like to do that creative writing. And they'll remember it and go home and talk to their parents, I hope. With the pumpkin catapults, I had the kids build a hypothesis what would work best for them. They did their own research and we built pumpkin catapults which were super fun, and we talked about kinetic and potential energy. They figured out what they needed. I provided just the tape and the popsicle sticks, and they built the rest for themselves. This was one of the best. He was so excited, and he won the prize for today for the longest pumpkin launch, and it gave him a chance to stand out, which is why I think Ag in the Classroom is so important. So hopefully that gives you a little glimpse into um, Dusty's classroom and what's going on. And I apologize. I forgot I was the one actually screen sharing and I left my um, chat box up. So I apologize if it was in your way at the beginning. Um, fortunately, Melody and Emily texted me and said, hey, get that off of there. Um, Dusty, do you want to talk any more about that? Or does anyone have any questions? There was a lot in that video. So if you've got any questions for Dusty about what was going on, um, Dusty, do you, do you want to give any insight into what was happening? Uh, looking back to my most energetic class, <laughs> it made me laugh. Um, they, the Mr. Man was our principal. So it, when you heard them, they were very concerned about not putting him in a positive light. But it, I, I'm, I was amazed that they still, and I'll still say those facts. That's why I ran into them. They're like, pumpkins are cuter, but what? <laughs> why would they know that? So it, it, it's really that's my favorite. I just love that. And it's not about, I mean, it's wonderful to do the pumpkins, but it doesn't have to be about carving them into Halloween shapes. They're learning with it. So that, that's one of my favorites, definitely. Thanks. I remember being there whenever we were um, filming that one, and the students were so excited and so engaged. Um, one of the one of my favorites was the little boy with the to be continued on his story. Um, but he, he was so excited to do the writing. And, and as Dusty mentioned earlier, um, she's had students who were reluctant to get involved, um, but they were so excited that day to get involved and to share what they were doing. Um, someone asked in the chat, how do you make the pumpkin putty? So that is in our fruits, nuts, and veggies booklet. It's on our website under resources. And let me um, really quickly, I'll go back 
and um, share my screen again and I can show you how to get to that. Um, maybe, hang on just a second. Okay. It's much more difficult to do this when everyone's watching you and that's why our teachers are doing a great job. Okay, let me now bring up my sharing again and show you on our website. So if you'll go to our resources, you can click classroom resources and this will take you to a page where you can um, access all of our uh, resources. So Dusty mentioned earlier and showed you the engineering process templates. They're here, you can request those and you simply click request the Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom resources to get the majority of the items that are on here. Fruits, Nuts, and Veggies Oh My is a booklet that we created and unfortunately we're almost out of it in print, but the recipe for the pumpkin putty is here. I'm not going to click it because it will take a, a little while for it to um, upload. So uh, I just wanted to show you where it's at, but if you click that booklet, you'll be able to um, find the recipe that she mentioned. One thing that I do want to tell you is in the recipe, it says very hot water. And what we found is you can use very cold water. In fact, I've even used water that set in my car overnight and had a little bit of ice in it. And I still was able to make the pumpkin putty. So I avoided that recipe for a long time. Dusty worked really hard the day we were there and she had a coffee pot to heat the water and, and to make sure everything was working correctly. And then now we found out, Dusty, you, you didn't need to do that. You could do it with regular room temperature water or even cold water. So don't avoid that pumpkin putty recipe. Uh, the students loved it. And I love that she was doing a science experiment that was with her ELA class and then used it for a writing component. So it was fabulous. Um, any last minute things that anyone wants to say? We've got about one minute left in the session. Dusty, you did a great job. Thank you so much. Uh, we sure do appreciate it. All right. Well, All right. Well, thank you everybody for showing up and sharing ag with me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dusty. It's fun to see, it's fun to see so many great ideas um, being used in your classroom. So with that, I'm gonna close this session out. The next one I'm gonna open up and it's uh, Michelle Ron. Uh, I think that's how you say her last name. Um, she has a great session. We got to preview it on Monday and we're excited for you guys to stick around and join us for that one. So thanks for joining us this morning.